I am Mark Silver. I'm an author and photographer in Carmel, California. Our guest today is none other than the famous Bambi Cantrell. She is world-renowned as a wedding and portrait photographer. She's published three best-selling books and has earned countless awards and accolades. So, Bambi, welcome to Advancing Your Photography. Good to have you back with us. Thank you. It's really good to be here. Here's my first question, which is what really oh. drives you when it comes to photography? What's what's that passion that you have for it? I love pictures of people. Absolutely yeah. love people. And so um, that's what gives me my passion is our, our people. And I, I don't think there's anything more entertaining or interesting than people are. I hear you. And we're going to talk about some of the specific ways that you approach your subjects. But what are some of the key things that you use every time you pick up a camera or even before you pick one up? Um, I'd have to say I am very much um, interested in keeping abreast of of, uh, changing technology, of changing times, and also changing taste in the in the minds of our subjects now some people would say they would roll their eyes and say oh that's that's ridiculous you know it's your style you should you know stay true to yourself but i really believe that photography is my profession it's not my religion and so you know to give you an example of what i'm talking about is when i started in photography it was in 1981 and um, as a professional, and at the, that time, you know, they had all the drop-in filters, and oh, then they yeah. had um, it was you know double exposure and stuff like that. And I remember thinking to myself, if I could just learn how to do a good double exposure, like the picture of the bride and groom in the wine glass, uh, I just knew that would be like the best thing ever. Wow, but if yeah. you think about yeah. it, is that popular today? And the answer would be no. Right. And so I've learned that photography is. That, that under the constraints of, of, of the photographic arena, I have to keep an open mind. And so I've adapted my style and I, I still have an underlying theme that runs through all my pictures, but I'm not, I'm not hardcore about one particular, um, you, you know, stylizing of my imagery. And, and when I'm ready to give it up, I'm ready to give it up and, and continue to, to go forward with, you know, advancing my profession as a professional photographer. You know, what is this all about? Um, actually, I shot this in a, in a hotel room um, when I was in Paris. So notice that the background is just simple, just a yeah. clean, simple background. And let's talk for a moment about what she's wearing. This is nothing more than a piece of fabric that I bought in New York City for $10. And I, you can't tell, but on the backside, I just stapled it together to form a skirt. I would it's never know that. really close to the body, all the way down. She's actually standing on my camera case, and um, it's covered. And then I bought these feathers in San Francisco at, um, at um, one of the... Um, fashion, the fabric stores in the city. And all I've done is just stapled it um, to a piece of ribbon that I tied around her waist. Unbelievable. It only has to look good on camera. Yeah. So why do this? Why do this kind of thing? Well, I like to do these kinds of um, imagery. It's because of the experience. The experience is as important as the click of the shutter. Mm. You see, if the client loves the experience and they go, oh, my goodness, well, my photographer created something really different. Um, you will not believe she took some feathers and she just stapled a, a piece of ribbon to them and tied them around my waist. And this is what we got. That is so smart, Bambi, because it is about that. I mean, when you're selling your work, it's a it's the whole package. It's mm-hmm. how they feel when they're being photographed by you and how they come away from that. And what I really like about it is I love having clients come back and go, oh, my goodness, Bambi, I can't believe you did that. And they will refer friends to me based upon that experience. So it it really goes a long way to creating a unique brand that transcends time, that gives you longevity. Um, I've been in the photo industry now for over 30 years, and it really is so important more than ever to keep myself um, fresh with new ideas. So I, I continue every day. I'm on, um, I'm looking for images that, that, um, that kind of 
spark my interest and then yeah. I can learn. I don't copy them, but I use them as reference points. Like right now I have a photo shoot coming up in two weeks for Metropolitan Bride magazine. So I'm in the middle of creating a mood board for that. And so I go to Pinterest. I love Pinterest because you can type in a variety of, uh, of scenarios or, or things um, and then it'll give you a picture ideas. And so I pull them into a folder that I will share with my uh, makeup artist and my hairdresser so we can start pulling together ideas for creating a unique experience. Okay, um, yeah. I pulled this image in here for a reason. And the reason is, is that especially when you're doing editorial photography, um, it's there are some times that the the mood and the um, the visual impact is not about things being sharp or crisp. Right. It's about right. having that bit of of mystery, and that's one of the elements. Photography, in my opinion, is about emotion, one way or the other. Either yep. love it or hate it, but don't be ambiguous about it because if you are, then it's awful and nobody's going to ever want it. Yep. And so, taking it from there, here is the actual. Here's what it actually looked in real life with this young lady. And by the way, this could be a high school senior. Um, this is just nothing more than newspaper wrapped around her body. Wow. Um, and then I added little pieces of tool that were that would uh, come in and out of it. Um, the tattoos that are on her arm, mother would be thrilled because they're all wash off. Nice. <laughs> it's um yeah, it's super easy. And all we did to create this look was just to use eyeliner and use a, temp a, 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 um, a template for um, being able to, to draw it on the body so that it looked, it looked nice. And Let's is talk a minute the, about- Is all the light coming just from the windows or do you have an, any other light going on here? Um, actually, it's a good question, Mark. Yeah. Um, I have um, right up here, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but there's a yeah. large soft box oh, um, nice. outside of this window. I yeah. use Profoto Studio Lighting um, I, this is taken with the B1 kit, and I, I love the Pro Photo lighting. Um, it was worth every penny I've ever spent. I have the D1 kit, at, which has four heads, and then I have the B1 kit or the B1 or B10 kit um, that is portable, and I use both of them all the time. And I, I here's what I love about it: it takes a lick in and keeps on ticking. It's it's not the least expensive, but I really believe if you buy the best then you, there's no apologies at last for a lifetime. Yeah. And my stuff lasts for a very long time. And I'm not one of those photographers who, you know, <clears throat> has to have the latest and greatest thing. I like something that I, I want to spend a significant amount of money on something that is going to last. Can we go back uh, to the, the first version of the, that you showed? I just want to see this. Okay. Now, you know, the thing about focus uh, Henry Cartier Bresson said this. He said, "Sharpness and focus is bourgeois." You know, he he considered it like okay, it's a middle class thing. Everybody sort of puts this standard on it. But when you're talking about art, it isn't important. I mean, what's important is, as you said, the emotion that you're trying to convey. That's exactly right. And you know, it's funny because the older I get, the more I really appreciate that there are times for selective focus and selective unfocus. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that sounds kind of weird, but, um, no, I and I prefer to do uh, everything in camera. Like this is the way it is in camera. Um, I could go into Photoshop and, and um, take the focus away from any image that I want to, but I really like, you know, doing it the old school way of in camera you know, yeah. get doing it the way you meant it to look in camera. Um, I've always been that way. Um, and I think it's because I came from the time when we worked with film, yeah. you know, film cameras and, and, you know, a roll of 12 exposures or whatever. And, you know, what you saw is what you got. And so I, I feel in many ways, um, I have deep respect for the photographers of, that learn that genre because you had to do it all. Nowadays, you can send it to a digital artist and basically, you know, you can take a, a mediocre image and if you have a good digital artist, they can make it look like a Picasso or whatever, you know? Yeah. So this has a film look. It almost looks like a Kodachrome to me, you know? It's mm -hmm. just... Yeah. And what was it? So was it just a really slow exposure? Do you remember what your settings were? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no way. 
Okay, that's but it fine. was a slow exposure. It was definitely Probably a slow exposure. Probably thirtieth of a second or something. Yeah. And because there's a little edge, it's like the edges have a little bit of sharpness to them, mm -hmm. and um, um, so it was a slow exposure. But there was a window um, up above, um, where up above her head, and that was the only light source in this particular room. So. Right. Awesome. Thank you for your generosity. These are awesome tips. These are things that, again, any of us can use and should. I'm glad I could help, and I hope you have a great day. You too. Tell your friends, share the video, and subscribe. If you haven't already done that, please do subscribe so you don't miss any of our new episodes. And last but not least, and you can say this with me, Remember to get out and capture your own images of life.